Hi, you're on the Blonde Guy YouTube channel, and today we're going to talk about the walker mower with the bagger and show you briefly where we use it out here in the yard. We've had a lot of rain. I mowed the yard yesterday. I used a 60 inch cut Kubota the ZD21, and we use it. I try to mow the grass like once every 11 days, but when we have a lot of rain, I try to back it up to say like seven days but we've had so much rain i really couldn't find a good time to mow the yard until yesterday what i'm going to show you here is out here along the driveway that's where the grass tends to pile up here you have to mow to the inside then this is uphill and you have to mow down the hill so it just kind of puts everything right there in the trough so we use the walker to pick that up right there in the ditch and as you can see it goes all the way out to the highway and also over here on the other side we have the same thing you have to mow with it down the hill towards the ditch and then the same thing over here from the field we mow it to the inside towards the ditch to make our turn and then the grass kind of piles up in the middle out there past the walnut tree plumb to the highway and then we use the the walker mower to pick it up as you can see it does a pretty good job and also where you're mowing here along your driveway since the Kubota mower slings the grass pretty heavy we mow two rounds to three rounds in Two rounds if the grass is not really thick. Three rounds if the grass is really thick, we mow to the inside. And then we, when we get that done, we come back and turn around and we start mowing the other direction and we mow counterclockwise. And the reason we mow counterclockwise is so we can throw that grass back over here where we already mowed. So you're not mowing grass over top throwing grass over top of what hadn't been mowed yet. Now we have to do it at least two to three rounds inside to keep from getting in the driveway over here. So once we accomplish that, then you're throwing two to three rounds back this way. And that's where the grass starts to pile up. As you come along, and it's shady right in here, but as you come along, it starts to pile up right in here. So I have to pick that up. And then right in here, since we had so much rain, we had to pick up some of this right in this area here. And then also right out there close to the fence, that's the property line. As you can see all those trees right there, you have to mow two or three rounds inside and then all that kind of piles up. But out there in that area back out there was really thick. I had to pick up almost 100% of that. And that's real shady right out there where those trees are. So if you don't pick it up, it just sits there and molds. And that's one thing I want to point out. You say, well, why pick up your grass? Well, if you don't want your yard to have grass piled on top of it, and you don't want it to get moldy and big old chunks and then your lawnmower hit them big old chunks and then just throw them out and then sometimes they'll clog up underneath the lawnmower the next time you mow especially if it lays there another week but that grass can lay on top of there and kill your grass even though we got a lot of rain um, but if it's just a little bit of grass you know i leave some of it like right here where we are here at the edge of the driveway I don't think I picked up any of this. I mean, and then out there in the middle section, we didn't pick up. But anywhere where I have to start make, making a turn, because right out there is a ditch, and there's a little ridge there for catch water to make it run down along that ditch out there. That's where I have to turn the lawnmower a different direction by the other way. But you get the gist of the idea. You can imagine that grass was piled up thick in places about two to three inches and since we having more rain this week 
All it'll do is going to make it mold. So that's what we wound up doing. And my thing is, we had 10 loads. And we take that grass and dump it down there in the woods. So what we do, we take the grass and dump it down here in the woods and it helps kill out some of the filth. Right here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 loads of grass. And that grass catcher packs it in tight. It's got a blower on it. And that blower really puts the grass in there. And that's not even all the grass here in the yard. If I'd had to pick up the whole yard, it'd probably be 20 loads there. But the thing is, seemed like it wanted to get full away out there. One time it got, several times it got full out there close to the road. A couple times it got full right here close to my pile. And it's not so bad then. Okay, but the main purpose of the walker mower, it has two purposes. One for picking up grass in the summertime and leaves in the fall. But as you can see here in this yard, we have a lot of oak trees. This is just to give you a quick roundabout of where I pick up here in the yard. I pick up right in here close. This whole driveway we're walking on. We pick up leaves in the driveway too. And down here close to the shop, we got all these down here to pick up. We do run it over the gravel and pick up leaves. And we also have right up there the whole backyard. And as you can see out here, it's a little shaky trying to do this, but I'm gonna show you how many trees we have. There's like 25 trees in this backyard. But up there, all the way down, all of these trees, and then all these right here at the tractor shed and these sheds here, all of these right here. And we use it to pick up leaves in the fall. In the fall of the year, well, let me back up a second. Just picking up grass here, that was like a two hour job right there. Um, picking up all that grass, those 10 loads. I believe I started somewhere around 1230 and I finished it around 2.30. Um, I tried to stay in the shade most I could uh, in the hotter times and then work my way into the hotter places, but it wasn't that bad. The wind was blowing out here, so I decided to go ahead and break my rule and mow during the hottest part of the day, which I was just picking up grass anyway. But normally I don't like to get out there in the hottest part of the day because it's so hot. And it's not a really good time, but I put my hat on and everything and we was ready to go. But here in the, sh under these shade trees, it feels a lot cooler here than it does right out there in that open sun naturally. But out there, there was a nice breeze going and you can really feel the wind. Here under these trees, it has to be a hard wind to actually feel some air. And the other thing we do in the fall, I walk in here to the shop, we, we're going to touch on this briefly. We use this here, uh, Cup Cadet 50 inch cut. And it has a mulch plug, and I've showed you this in a previous video. But here's your mulch plug. Had to buy that separate. Uh, I went to a dealer that sells those lawnmowers and bought the mulch plug. Got my, de got my lawnmower at Home Depot because the dealer couldn't give me a good deal on the on the mower that I wanted and they didn't have this model and that's what I wanted. But that uh, mulch plug is in right down here. You raise that up, put it in, let her down, and it locks in place. So what I try to do is every other week, one week I will grind leaves with the mower here, this Cup Cadet, and then Depending on how many fall, I may do, do it again. And the next week, I will use the walker mower out here to pick up leaves. 
And this is what we got, the walker mower. You've seen it in the shop here with the, with the, mop, with the hood open up on it. But it's a walker grass handling system, the GHS model. And it's a uh, 48 inch cut and they do make one wider. And I think they even make a diesel if you can still get them. They do make them without the bagger. This one has the bagger on it. Okay, I found what I was looking for. Here's a picture of your mower. And then right there it says uh, 6.7 bushel. That's what I believe the model I have is. There is an option on one right here. It's 9.5 bushels or 89 gallons. That's 63 gallons on the one I got. But when the grass is a little bit damp, even this morning and the way it packs it in there, that thing's pretty heavy. So it looks like this one here is the 6.7 bushel model. And that's, that's a lot of grass. <laughs> so, and of course you get your owner's manual with this thing, spare keys, um, some other, there's some shear off pins for the drive shaft out here that come extra with it, which they'll go right down there. And this thing is shaft drive from the engine, which is, there's a pump under there and it comes shaft drive here. It's shaft drive to this gearbox, there's your shaft, to this gearbox that comes across here. And the blades, the blades turn uh, into each other. This one turns like counterclockwise and that one over there turns clockwise. I believe that's how it is. But they turn into each other. Yeah, this one turns clockwise and that one turns counterclockwise. And what that does, it feeds it to the hopper right here that I'm pointing to. It feeds it to that hopper right there. That's how it starts out. And also I'd like to point out that you uh, move these levers here and they slide out and then they slide back in. But once you slide these out, you raise this lawnmower deck up, put that back in place. You slide these out to the left and that one goes over to the right. And you grab this handle down here and you pick it up and this handle folds out. And as you pick it up, this little piece here you bring it up into this hook up here and put it right in there. And I'm not going to do it because I've only got one hand till my till I get my new tripod to come in to make videos with. But that hook goes up there and that holds your uh, mower deck up. Once you have the mower deck up, then you have some shear off pins underneath underneath here and underneath here on the blades. There's two on each blade. If you hit something hard, they shear off. So that's how that's protected. And of course there's a shear off pin right underneath that cover there in your shaft. And as you go up and down heels, this deck here will raise up and down. So this raises up with it right here. And that there keeps everything uh, from binding up. But this thing has a ton of grease fittings on it, but We'll show you the rest of the outside here. Here's your uh, starter key. That's your oil pressure light. Let you know if you get oil pressure. Here's your forge drive gear. This is all hydrostatic, or your forward speed control is what they call it. Here's your parking brake. This here turns on your blades and also the blower and everything else that works when you're picking up grass. And then you have this here shock that holds the uh, door open. You just grab it right here, raise it open, just like that. Inside here, as you're mowing, this thing I got my finger on, as the grass fills up, it hits this. And we'll demonstrate that. What that does is alert you that the thing is full. Turn your key on, pull this up, and see now it's turning back here off the battery. And there it is, nice and loud. That runs off the battery while you're mowing. 
that's a pretty good little thing. Tells you when it's full. Um, this thing was throwing a lot of grass on me and I went to the dealer and asked them, there's something I can do about it. And they said, yeah, you can purchase this flapper here. Cause right down there's a screen and that's where your air comes out from this machine. There's a lot of air come out of here. That air comes through here, comes out this direction and with it shut, somehow it was actually throw, throwing grass in back of me there. But you take that screen out and clean it as needed. It very seldom needs cleaning. I uh, don't usually do it, but this here was an option I had to buy, this piece here. But that's pretty much how that works in there. Nice little warning system. Tells you that it's full. And I did have to put some little brackets in here. Right here where it started to show a little stress, I added that metal bracket. But you take and push this button in and then grab it up here, past that notch. It's got two stru struts on it. And she goes right down. What was happening, grass would come up through here and this is all designed where it can move when you open it. The grass was coming up through here and it was shoot off this little crack and it was sling out wave at times and hit me in the back of the head. But anyway, there's your fuel tank. It's translucent. You have to really look hard to see where the gas is in those tanks once they get dirty. Here's your adjustment on the deck. You have pins to adjust, so it's not easy to adjust. You have to raise it up out here and grab these handles and raise, pick the weight up off of it. Put that in another pin hole. Same way with your front end, not easy to adjust at all. You know, I wish it was a little bit easier, but I didn't buy this more and it was part of this, uh, part of the deal here when we moved here. But on this side, you have your choke and then you have your throttle and you run your throttle wide open with the blades on. And when I'm not with, when I don't have my blades on, I back it down at least uh, about three quarter way. Uh, it seems like it didn't have enough power. I don't know if somebody adjusted on the carburetor or what, but I adjusted it where I'd have more power at high throttle. So that's that. Here's your handles you grab to dump with. And there you dump that. Here's your chute where the grass goes in. Occasionally it gets stuck like it did today. I didn't shut it off in time. And you'll have to stick your arm up in there and your moving parts are down here so you can leave it running. So I had to stick my arm in there. Here you can see the dirt on my arm all the way up to my uh, armpit, just about. To actually reach up in there and push and turn it to the left or right, which are what's turned at the time, and push that grass out. Here's the straps where we had the little stress problem. I put the bracket on the inside of the chute. Uh, put those extra piece of metal in there because it's really starting to pull on that there uh, bin and this bin is plastic. And then of course here's part of your air intake system. We'll show you the rest of that in a minute but it goes down there. Here's your chute where the grass comes in and it shoots it right up in here. Fold this back down. And then here comes the fun part, folks. Let's see if we can get a good angle of me doing this. And this is a, this is pretty heavy right here, but we're gonna show you that. You have to raise this thing like this with two hands and pick it up and she's heavy. You get under it. It's got a shock that grabs. Bring in and show you that. The shock here helps hold it up. There's a little pin right here. You see I got the pin out and the shock is basically holding the lawnmower. The shock is basically holding the lawnmower up right now. But that pin's a locking mechanism. Once you hear it go, push it up and hear it go click, then it's holding it. That's your safety mechanism. So I'm pulled down on it right there and it's not going anywhere. 
Now, a little bit more about the grass system. What it does, here's your blower. There's your blower that power fills through that chute right there and power fills this thing. Um, that handle over here, when you turn it on, this one right here, I got my hand on, that engages your blades. It engages this belt here. And there's your drive pulley for the uh, blades up there. And that powers your shaft. And also you have a little belt here that powers from the engine, powers this, it transfers over to here. That transfers over to your, I guess you can call it motion or hydrostatic pump, but it belt powers this pump. That's your right side. And then the belt runs up here, goes down there by that little fan and powers this other side right here. So that one powers this and that one powers that. So you got left and right drive on this thing, just like a regular zero turn. And the fluid's kind of hard to check when it's cold, like you're supposed to, or if you're out in the sun, it's hard to check. But if you can see the darkness right here and right here, it's light. That's where it's supposed to be. There's a mark, uh, I think it's right there at my fingernail, it says oil level, but it, you can barely see it, it's right there. These are sealed units. Do not break these seals on these things and open them up, you're just asking for trouble. Same on this one. There's the oil and it's up to my fingernail right there. So it's a little bit above that line. It's probably cause I'm sitting down hill. But when it's hot, it pushes it up a little bit higher and makes it easier to read. When, when it's down here low like this, you can't hardly see it. And I've mowed for two hours and I know it's fine. And then also you have to check your oil here in this drive unit. Here's a dipstick to check that. And then also here's your dipstick for your engine oil. And this is a Kohler Command. Uh, I want to say it's 18 horsepower. Kohler Command. Let's see. Yeah, got that right. This is a Kohler Command 18 horsepower. And it's a V-twin. It's got the Donaldson air filtration system here. It's got one of those, uh, one of those big filters. It filters, pushes there into the carburetor here. It brings air in actually up here. Put that handle down. Here's where it draws your air in. Pulls it down this tube. It's trying to suck air from up here where it's clean, but these things still suck in dust. But it pulls it in here through the bottom, comes in down here, brings it through the filter, filters it, goes into the engine. And there are grease fittings on this machine all down in here, all down in here where your left and right uh, levers are. They're all down in here. And it's a lot to, lot to take in when you first get it. I've had this lawnmower a while and for myself, it's a job to grease this thing. And I was talking to the, the guy that works at the dealer one time. I said something to him about it. And he's like, well, some, some of those fittings aren't really important. And so that was him telling me that, you know what? I'm lazy. <laughs> Maybe that's him telling me that I don't grease those fittings. So my lawnmower don't go to the shop. I grease my own fittings myself, do the work myself. And it is quite tedious. This part here, all this under here degrees is not so bad. Even these out here on the front, it's not so bad. But uh, we're gonna put this thing down. All right, I reached down there already and pulled the pin and the shock's holding it. Do not put your head underneath this thing as she comes down, because it can fall on your head. I'm gonna try to do this. Maybe the shock will hold it right there. Try to do this right quick and show you what you do. Don't put your head under there. It could probably decapitate you. I 
I usually grab it right up here at the top, pull my pin, put it back in the slot position, pull my pin, let her come down. One hand here, I'm out of the way. And don't put this knee in the way. I have actually let this thing drop and come down on my knee and then make you cry like a little baby because it's so heavy. So once you get it down here part of the way, get on back behind this wheel back here, get on out of the way. And then reverse your hands and put your shoulder into it and let it come down easy because you do not want to bust that bagger or anything there. You don't want to bust that bagger and have to buy a new one. I mean, I'd hate to see what this thing cost, letting that thing drop. She is a nice little unit. Uh, the back wheel swivels. She pulls with the front, the front big tires here. And it also has little bumpers right there. <laughs> Stop using my foot, but point out with my finger here. But these little bumpers are to protect your unit and to protect your home, your poles, fence post, whatever. That's what that's for. And then of course up here at the front, you got your dolly wheels and they just dolly on around. And uh, we'll crank this thing up, and let you get a sound of what it sounds like. She's a nice little running little vehicle uh, unit. It sounds about like a motorcycle V-twin running when she's cold, but she's warm right now. <laughs> Well, maybe she got a little cold. Nothing like a V twin cola running. I think I've done showing all I want to show you about this. So while she's running, we're going to go ahead and sit down, show you how this works. Now, as I mentioned, you got two levers here. And you got this lever on the side. What you do is release your brake and it just slides down. Don't ever pull this thing up while you're moving, even if it's an emergency, because this is not emergency brake, it's a parking brake. If you need to stop, you need to pull back on this lever and pull back on these levers if you're going downhill too fast or something. You can do that if you have to. I did one time. This is actually like a um, set of teeth that lock in. And once you pull that in up like that, you grab it back there with your hand. Once you do that, pull it up and lock in case of emergency. I guess you could use it. There's teeth that lock in and you can hear them grinding. It sounds like, sounds like your transmission on your car's scraping when you do that. So it's teeth that actually mesh lock this in from what I believe and what I can tell uh, by looking at it. I don't know how else to explain it, but push it off. Put your hand down on here. And this is where I wear my gloves because you get up and off the lawnmower, you also want to push. I use this here to kind of help myself get up. And as your hand twists on that knob there over time, it's kind of hard on your hand. And then like I said, on the other mower, these right here, I got my hand on it right now and I can feel the vibration. And I think I came up with an idea about what to do with the other one. We're gonna try that. But reach down and push this thing forwards, just like that. And once you push it forwards, these two here will move forwards. It's really simple to use. And when you wanna go left, you pull back on the left. You wanna go right, pull back on the right. You wanna switch hands. I used to drive with the left hand like this and then you can back up without touching that forward motion. Just pull back and as soon as you let go it's going to go forward so don't let go of it fast. Especially if you got this handle pushed way up because if you do they actually have a video that came with this mower. You can push it off like that. I actually have a video that came with this mower showing the back end of the thing coming up off the ground. And I'm like, well, how did he do that? And I watched it again. It was um, on a V8 uh, VCR tape. So we're going to back in here. 
pull this thing inside and see I'm going slow so anytime you do this there's a chance when you move it real fast you can see it do it right there a little bit see even at low speed and low idle there's your back end hopping up and down off the ground now you imagine doing that and this thing running fast and we're going to ease right in here and i'm going to have to hold the control with my legs to get the stop of creep sound and pull that up quickly and shut it off boy this is a little bit of demonstration i didn't actually think that it would jump like that at idle speed let's set the camera right there i'm gonna raise this thing up let the rest of the heat get out <clears throat> get this arm flipped over actually put your elbow in your gut like i do and push it up you may be stouter than i am but there it is raise her up and let the heat get off of it um i'll show you my book right quick that we had made. I spent hours taking pictures. These pictures are mine and I do own the copyright to them because I take them. I took the pictures, but what I did, I made me a thing that showed how to, showed where your grease fittings are and makes it simple. Show where they are because they don't have numbers. And from now on, I'm going to go by this book here that I made. As you can see, there's like number 17. And some of these grease fittings are multiple. Uh, Hydrostat checks the oil level, so that's not a grease fitting. Let's see. There's showing oil level. Uh, I'm trying to see how many grease fittings they were. All right there's number 30, position 31. And... This is 31, folks, and this lawnmower has multiple fittings, like this number one, there's one on the left, one on the right. So there's more than 30, one on the left, one on the right. So here's a picture of your drive unit that I took. This is funny. The manual tells you to check, take the cover off of here and check your oil level when you have a leak that's exactly what it says in the manual check for oil leaks with cover off so when the cover's on i saw a little bit of leak here seeping down the side here and here i'm gonna walk around and show you that and there you can see right there looks like it may have just a little bit of seepage still but you have to take this cover off take these screws out one on each side cover comes off then you can see your drive down there. And that was really surprising to me that they actually designed a machine that costs as much money as this and actually put in there in the instructions that you need to check the oil level when it looks like it's leaking. And what it is, you've got um, four screws right here. And you take those four screws off there's just like a little gasket underneath all this right here, a little gasket there. And then there's one over here and those are um, Allen head screws. So you take those out and then right here is where you feel the oil, right? And then you have to check it over here in the middle. There's no checkpoint over here. This fluid runs across. So when I check the fluid level here, I was like, wow, how am I supposed to do it? So what I actually did, checked it from the top. I took me this piece of metal I got laying here, like this right here. Just took a piece of metal and cleaned the dirt off of it. And I put it down in that hole right there. And as I did, I put my thumbnail up to the top plate, put it down in there. And I said, okay, there's my thumbnail. And there's how much oil I have in it. And there's my check plug way up there and my oil levels down here. 
So what I did, I just took these, took these and tightened them down. I think I took them off and inspected, <laughs> inspected that. I think I took that completely off. I took this and completely off maybe. But anyway, I tighten up four bolts here, four bolts over here. You got four on the front of this thing. And essentially you put oil in the left side and the right side. This one's on the front, that one's on the back cause they're the same piece, they're just reversed. Put oil in these two until it starts to flow out. And you have to give it time from here to here. And uh, I believe it was 90 weight gear oil. So tighten those up. Also, right here, I don't know if you can see that. Let me get in closer. Right there is a bolt head. That's uh, also, I believe, where it was leaking, actually. Now that I think about it. It's leaking where this shaft meets this piece, this shaft meets that piece. Same over here where this shaft meets that piece, this shaft meets that piece. And, of course, there's like four bolts here, four there, four over here, and there's four over here. <clears throat> And you have to tighten all those bolts down there, 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 and there. Basically what you're doing is retightening those bolts from the factory. And I done this on this mower. Uh, we can look at the hour gauge and tell you. Okay, I didn't have to look at the hour gauge. What I actually did was look at the oil filter while I put the hours down, where I changed it, and then I wrote my next hour. So it's 330 hours. So at about 300 hours, you definitely, I've never had that cover off. You definitely need to take that cover off that mower and check these pieces that I'm showing you here in my manual that I made. And because there's not a really good explanation. There's some pictures in the book. I think it may have this, but that's, that's, that's one important thing about this mower. You need to check that oil in this thing and do that. And once you're done filling it up, it starts to run out here. Um, just put a little bit in the time in these two over here on each side. Put a little bit in these two until they come to the middle. Do a little bit of time so it starts to flow out. Put your plug back in, put your plug back in, put your plug back in on top, you're good to go. But <clears throat> this thing's got multiple fittings like this number six here. This is on the same side. It tells you number six and it says two places. So this thing's I've got 30, 40. So there's 40 to 50 fittings on this thing. And the reason we made this book, as you can see, this is what they give you. There's number one. And some of these are places where you drop oil on, which I don't usually put oil on stuff because it tends to have dirt stick to it and make stuff wear out faster. But there's a list all the way down through there, all the way down through here. Stops at number 35, but that's what you get, a list. And then instead of a nice picture that would be black and white, taken with a camera, you get a hand-drawn picture. And you can see all these little numbers pointing here and there. And I found that some of them are pointing to something that's actually uh, something else, a couple mistakes here and there. I found out that there's actually some that they missed. And this is really hard to read and interpret all of this, especially the ones that are down underneath here and down underneath here. You'll miss them. Say like right here, I put under the right side so I don't know what they're talking about. You have to lay down on the ground and get that one. Right here, I wrote under the left side. You have to lay down and get that one down there. And I can't even see it on this unit where it is, what they're pointing to. But I can get in my manual and look at, ooh, that was a big, a big horse fly. But I can get in my manual and look at an actual picture of this thing. There it is. And I used a green ink pen to point to the grease fitting. So when I get older and I'm not able to use this mower or something, maybe my kids or grandkids or neighbor or somebody can use this thing. And then right here, I wrote down what number it is. Lift and brake actuator pivot under the right side. Number 30 is the other one. And that's the one on the other side. It's right here. Lifter belt tightener pivot under left side. 
and I used a green ink pen to point to that one. It's right there. Nice color pictures. Took me a long time to do this. I mean, several hours to do this. Um, here's an example of what you need to grease. How, and then there's, you gotta take this drive shaft apart. And it's really hard to get in there. And you, if you have one of these things, you'll have to figure out how to do this. Here's, a, here's the hardest part greasing this lawnmower. This universal joint. You have this collar here. It's kind of like a drive shaft, a shaft on a bush hog. But you have a collar here you have to release. Once you release that, then you can grab that shaft and pull it out. And once you do, the end of it drops. And as you go to put it back in, it's dropped down and it's hitting stuff. And you gotta figure out how to get it turned back up to that pump and get it on the splines where it lines up to. This mower, I've had this one about 12 years, I think, that I've been using it. Um, it was a couple years old when I got it and it had low wires on it it still does but i mean it's complicated to use um the only reason why the only reason why i use it and put up with all the complicated things i have to do with it is because you only have to change the oil you have to change the oil in every 50 hours so that's when you have to do the maintenance um when I was talking about buying filters and how many I need, it, uh, it takes about three years to put 50 hours on it. I believe the last time I changed the oil in it, it said 2017. And the same thing with this other mower over here. And that's because I have these three to mow with. And so it doesn't take as long. I mean, it takes longer to put hours on it. It's not like you're putting 50 hours on it every year, but I'm not kidding you. I've done this service work on this thing over and over again and to do that on this mower i would almost rather take a beating as to to service this thing this under the hood is not so bad now that i got my new diagram catalog showing where you grease things that makes it easier for me now but the hardest part is to get that shaft off out from underneath that deck down there and you have to raise that deck up and stand it in the upright position and you just have to go at it i mean the directions in there in the manual tell you briefly how to do it but basically what i'm saying is you have to figure out the best way for you to pull that out and put that shaft back in because my arms are skinny and you can tell it's a tight position to put my arm in there over top of the chute and to grab that shaft and pull it backwards and pull that collar at the same time and to release it. And then once you pull it off and you go to put it back in, like I said, it drops down and then it's hitting the shaft and you got to get it turned up with your hand and pull the collar at the same time and get it on there. I mean, it is a job. This is no joke. Maybe I'm just slow. At least two hours, maybe three to fully grease this thing. I'm hoping now, since I have my catalog, a part, a, grease fit and diagram, I'm hoping that I can cut that time in half because I noticed what was slowing me down was this. I'll go down the list. Okay, I got that one. And I would lay this here. Say so lay it like on the back of this lawnmower here, just like this. I lay it there where I could see it real easy. I say, okay, this one here has got two fittings. Do that, okay. Well, time you get down through here and you get a little tired and you play with your grease gum because it's running out of grease and this and that and other, you're like, well, where did I stop at? And, you know, if you're like me, sometimes you forget. The best thing to do is I figured to use, to make me a manual, like I said, I did. Once I get something done, turn the page. Once I get that done, turn the page. Once I've checked it for leaks, Turn the page. And I don't have to sit here and fight this diagram that I'm supposed to look at over here because you're supposed to read what the number is so you know where you're at. And then you come over here and say, there's number eight. Okay, there's number eight. Well, where exactly does number eight point to? It's pointing to something right there. You know, number 13 points to that. So what's number eight actually point to? See, I can't even tell you. 
So number eight points to it's not in there. Oh, number eight's oil. See? And you get confused real easy. You're looking for a grease fit and it's actually oil. But number 10. And a lot of this stuff looks alike. Here's this gray piece with fittings. You don't know if a lot of that there looks alike and you'll get confused. Because you have like one up there, one down there, and then you got some over here on this other side over here that's same type metal. You got one over there and one right here. You can't see it because it's not bright enough. We'll shed some light on it. I'm not trying to discourage anybody from buying one of these things. I mean, you just got to know what you're getting into. It's a lot of grease fittings. But as you can see, I'm going to set this somewhere safe. There's some grease fittings right there. Right there's one. Right there's one. Right down here is one right there at the end of my hook. Right there's one at the end of the hook. Right over there's one at the end of the hook. I think. But uh, I believe we talked enough about that machine. But it took me a few hours to do this print, and then I had to get my wife to take this off my phone, send it to her email. She went to the print shop. She had to pay like so many, so many cents per photo. So she paid to have that made, and then I had that old binder.